If you're like me, you've seen statistics, stories, and commercials about the world water crisis. Perhaps you've heard the fact that 783 million people do not have access to clean or safe water. How do these people even survive without running water? Today, I'll be taking on the Water Walk Challenge. I have never been to Africa. I cannot relate to this situation, but I really want to help. Water Underground is a California-based nonprofit organization. For us, we kind of look at the bigger picture of how we can help communities develop and lift themselves out of poverty using water as the first basic building block. In America, the average household uses 80, 20 liter jerry cans, for example, every day. In Mozambique, a family's lucky if they can fetch six. You know, the minimum distance that they might walk to get water is maybe one and a half or two miles. And they need to do that more than once a day to have enough water for their family. So usually the women will get up quite early, maybe four in the morning, uh, to go on their first trek for water. The terrain is, is not easy. It's sandy, it's rocky, it's hilly, um, and obviously they don't have good hiking shoes or, or good support for their feet. Usually they're doing it in flip-flops or sandals flip -flops. or something. Yeah. So the women in, in Mozambique are warriors. My name is Rakia. I'm from Mozambique. Growing up in Mozambique was a bit difficult. We had water, but it wasn't, wasn't clean. How old were you when you started fetching water? About, I think it was eight. And that was yes. your whole life, just carrying water? Yes, yes. I don't think like uh, people like you can understand exactly if you never been there, you never lived, uh, unless you do it and you see. Like I challenge you to try, carry like 20 liters of water, and walk for two miles and tell me what did you have experienced and you so you don't drop it because when you drop it you're gonna have to go back and fetch more. I really hope that doesn't happen. This is your run-of-the-mill 20 liter jerry can. We're gonna remove the lid because they don't generally have lids in their jerry cans. So I can't drop it. So don't drop it. <laughs> All right. Well, at least the way down, it'll yeah. be light. Mm -hmm. The women don't have the luxury of uh, arch support. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to wear some lovely Mozambique flip flops. That's okay. Generally, the women will wear those or go barefoot. The, uh, the irony. Yeah. Really trying to not think about how this is going to be when I'm carrying like 50 pounds of water. This is very quickly very uncomfortable. gonna carry this all the way back up. Rakia said try to carry it on your head, but I don't know if I'm gonna... I honestly was thinking to myself, can I even do this? The jerry can is really, really hard to carry. Oh my god. Maybe I should put it on my head now. Oh my god, there's like nothing stable about this. The water's like swaying around. In 
we've only gone like 20 feet and I had to stop to take a break because my shoulder's just like locked up because you think you're just, your hands are just there for balance and the water's moving around so much you have to counter, oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna get this. I'm just gonna use my hands, see if I can do that for a little bit. There is no comfortable way to carry this. I'm so frustrated. It's like you can't carry it in the front because then your knees hit it, and on the side it's off balance. And then when I put it on my head, I feel like it's gonna fall off. <sighs> the reality in these rural areas in Mozambique and a lot of other parts of Africa and the developing world is that the women are the water bearers so just by tradition the women and their daughters are the ones that are generally expected to go and search and fetch water every day. What this means is that unfortunately women then uh, miss a lot of opportunities to do anything else. Uh, income generation, going to school, usually they miss school or are very late for school because they've spent hours in the morning and hours in the afternoon going with their mothers to fetch water. So the crisis is definitely most impactful for women. We've been walking for about 30 minutes now and I don't think we're even like a quarter of the way back. How are you feeling so far? I feel terrible. Doing it is one thing and thinking that people do this every day. I'm really frustrated right now that I can't find a comfortable way to carry this. It's like killing my grip. When we were coming down here and the jerry can was empty, I was kind of like, oh, I wonder what's like the safest, driest way to get across the river. Now I'm like, I don't care. Everyone get out of my way. I will go through whatever rocks and obstacles are in the way to make sure this gets across. Thinking about how there are plenty of people, women, in the world who are doing this right now and not complaining about it. And how ridiculous it is that I could throw out a faucet. A lot of the women that I've worked with say that, you know, if, if they have enough water left after drinking, cooking, washing clothes, they'll have a bath. But everything else comes first and the women kind of sacrifice their own feelings of beauty and personal hygiene because they need to care for their family and they only have a certain amount of water to do that with. I cannot imagine doing this every day. I cannot imagine doing this multiple times a day in the heat or taking all of this effort to do this only to find out that the water is contaminated. In reality, um, the women in Mozambique don't have time to stop, at, you know, every few feet. Oh, um, oh God. They generally carry it the whole way and maybe they'll stop once to readjust. Yeah, see the calluses on your hands. I almost dropped the jerry can multiple times towards the end and that was so stressful. This is all you did every day. What would keep you going, Michelle? Just knowing I guess I was bringing something back to keep people alive. That's the only thing I can think about right now that people do this every day. I have a really different appreciation of what it means to have water and to help others get it. I think you are so strong and inspirational and an incredible person. There are people in the world without water, but you don't really understand what that means 
until you are carrying 40 pounds of water in flip flops. <laughs> And what I want to do is give these women an, an opportunity where they don't have to worry. I'm going to pledge to donate $1,000 to Water Underground. And I have also left a link in my description for anyone else who wants to contribute to the cause. I would love to hit a $4,000 donation. I have about 700,000 subscribers at this point in time. Thank you guys so much for that, by the way. And if every one of you guys donated $1, we would be able to fund 28, 28 water projects, including installing the well and providing all of the education to the community over a two month course. Sanitation period. centers, gardens, it's insane. everything. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. I think that there are plenty of people in the world who don't understand the privilege of being able to turn on a faucet and really what that means. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a great day and don't take your water for granted. Happy World Water Day.